my title is Who's Driving Your Car? All right, Who is driving your car? All right, Think about it. Right. Okay, my scripture is going to come from Psalms 91, All right. verse 1. Right. Chapter 1, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word, God. God, we ask that we grow closer to you, God. If we've not made everything right, God, we repent, God. And thank you for that chance to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Who's driving your car? You ever get in the car with someone? They are on the passenger side. But they're going to tell you the shortest way to get there. They're going to tell you what, how fast you're going. They're going to tell you, oh, you see that light? Stop. They are driving the car, but they should be the passenger. Okay, so I'm asking you, is God driving your car or are you driving the car? God should be driving the car. And let's talk about why God should be driving. Okay, let's go down the road. Let's drive it. When we try to do things, when we try to drive, that person is dri driving for you. It's messing it up for you, making you nervous, but mm. they can't drive for you. Yeah. Let God drive. God see what's down the road. God see what's going on. Yeah. But that thing said abide. Abide. What does that mean? That's like me walking with you. Look at this thing. Walk, this mic walking with me, moving with me. It's not going anywhere unless I go. That's what abide. How can we abide? How can we abide? You know, I got three pet peeves of how we can abide. One. One. Staying in the Word, reading that Bible, yeah. meditating on it, day and night. Yeah. I mean, like digesting it. Yeah. Don't just read it looking at TV or on the phone. I'm reading the Word. I'm reading the Word. Yeah, I got that Word in me today. No. <laughs> Meditate on it. Chew it. Let it regurgitate. Yeah. Get it in your spirit. Read, study, meditate on it. Day and night. Carry it with you. So it's like a sword. Yeah. And so you'll use right words when it's time. Right. And so then pray. Pray. Right. See, God knows us. God still loves us. If he said something, he's going to do it. Yeah. So we pray as me, myself, and I. Oh, God, thank you for, the, oh, Sister Butterbee, buy my lunch. Thank you, Lord, for that ride today, Lord. Oh, the Lord is good. Oh, yeah, he blessed me. He don't want that kind of prayer. He knows how we are. So he got to get us in, in the outer court to move us into worship, in the inner court. And so worship is when we have our hands lifted up, we are so in love with him. See, we are abiding with him. We're moving with him. His word is life to us, you know. And, and then that last thing, praise and worship. Now see, we praise him. We're doing the same thing in our prayer. See, so he knows we got an outer court and the inner court. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. God is good. That's because everything going your way. But as soon as things not going your way, you're looking at somebody all wrong and all crazy. You see what I'm saying? So God got to get us in that worship. We lifting our hands. We loving on God. God loving on us. He taking that junk out we don't need. He putting stuff in there that we need. Substance. Yeah. And so, see, now listen to Psalms 1. When he said a body. And look at the feathers under the wing. A wing is a feather. And let me tell you something about a baby bird. See, God is not ignorant. Those little babies, they under their mom, and they so comfortable, they fed, they protected. When the storms come and the floods come and the rain come, they under the wing. They protected. They not worried. But we up all night. We, oh, Lord, we trying to fix it. We trying to work it out. See, that's where that other driver is. Let God be the driver. But God takes care, and he protects them. And see, they so comfortable home. That the mother bird has to put little bras, little sticky stuff in the nest. So they will not be comfortable to stay there forever. Some of us want to stay here forever and ever. But those birds got to come out. And so they got to fly on them. But I tell you, God is good. Who driving your car? Who driving your car? Okay, let me give you three examples right here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 21. Let's talk about Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. Who was driving Sarah's car? <laughs> Sarah, when the angels came, they were too old, we know the story, and they couldn't have children. That's what they said, but that's not what God said. So who's driving your car? And so when the angels told, when I come back, uh, you'll be with child. <laughs> who's driving her car? <laughs> then she's going to get on the passenger side, going to rush and die. Okay, Abraham, look, I can't have any kids. So you go in and take my handmaid, and you have some kids, and so we're going to, we're going to, God's too slow. 
we're gonna work this thing out. Okay, here we go with the child. What happened? This was, what happened? You are the passenger. Stay on the passenger side. Here we go. Oh, she mad at Hagar. Okay, well, we gotta get rid of this. We can't have this competition, so. Who's driving here? Okay, so. I want you to figure out from the three which one is driving your car, where you are. Okay, let's talk about Isaac. Now, Isaac is kids. You guys are kids. And so, you have a choice to make right and wrong decisions. Your mom and your dad might make say things that you don't like and you don't understand. But they're still your mom and dad. And they're still your provider and they're going to take care of you. And if they're wrong, God is going to deal with them. So look at Isaac. Now, he's walking with dad. He's telling dad, where's the, where's the sacrifice? Uh -huh. We got the wood, we got everything. Mm -hmm. Where's the sacrifice? But he's still walking with dad. Mm -hmm. But he could have said, I'm not going with you. Well, you got to show me something. You got to tell me something. But he didn't. He even went as far as getting on the altar. Yes. Who's driving his car? Mm -hmm. So there's no age limit to driving your car. Right. Last is Abraham. Abraham, three days of walking, he wanted a son. Like us wanting certain things that we just got to have. We're not going to let it go. And I don't care what nobody say. God gave it to me. Hmm, which lane are you in? Yes, God is going to give you something. But maturity, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to treat it? Okay, here it is. Can you imagine walking three days knowing that you, oh, you can't have any more kids. And so God only promised you one. And so you say, how did you promise? I'm too, I'm here, here's some of us. I ain't say that you, some of us. Oh, God, I live right. God, I've done everything you asked me to do, God. God, God, you promised me to. I mean, begging and pleading with God. Not abiding in the word. Not abiding in the word. Not speaking the word. I don't care how long it takes. I don't, did it take Abraham a month after to, for Sarah to have a baby? Nope. It was years. It was years. But we just want a microwave promise. Okay, God, give me this. Okay, God, thank you. Jesus, hallelujah. Glory. No, but if you abide in that word and you're under his ways, you have a relationship with him. I, okay, Abraham said, okay, well, let me wrap this up. Abraham said, okay, I'm going to do this thing. God. He could have argued. Maybe he might have. We don't know. But he did it. He did what God said. So God's letting us know that none of us are perfect. But if we abide in him, we will become like him. We will love the things of him. So he built the altar, put the sun up there on the fire, and took the knife. Whoops. What happened? Angel of the Lord said, because you were faithful, you were going to do it. You were not like us procrastinating, yeah. not going to do it, yeah. hoping you're going to change your mind, wavering. <laughs> no, he didn't. So, God, we just thank you for that word. I'm going to ask you, what, who is driving your car? If the right person is not driving your car, you need to slide back over your seat and let God drive your car and stay in that word. Be faithful to God. Praise God for who he is and what he is in your life. Father, we thank you for your word, God. We love you, Lord. We lift you up. We magnify you. We repent, God, and we have not been where we're supposed to be, God. And we thank you for that opportunity to get it right. God, we thank you, Lord. Drive for us, God. Drive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, great, mighty, precious God, surely, your presence is in this place. Yes. And surely you have something to say to your people. Yes, Lord. I don't know what it is, but I open my heart, open my mouth, yes. that you yes. can be glorified yes. today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. 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 Um, can't say I have a scripture or anything like I said, just found out last night. But basically what I want to share well, what's on my heart this time, and I don't know which way it's going to go, is that uh, we're in the house of God. We're all children of God. Yeah. At some point in time, we asked Jesus Christ into our hearts, and we were, as they said, born again. Now, that happened for me as a teenager, so as a teenager, it's a little bit different. Well, I should... Well, I'm speaking for me. 14 as a teenager is a little bit different than with, hopefully, with adults. Because they, uh, 
supposedly more mature and understand more what God's word is saying. Growing up as a child, you're just there and you're just hearing the word preached over and over again. And sometimes at your level of intelligence, you do understand what's being said. You do understand why you're coming to the altar and asking Jesus in your heart. But mostly for me, the reason I came is I just didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> and this, the thing about the Christian walk, it is a walk, it is a journey, it is a time of growth and maturity. But the funny thing about it, how fast we grow, how close we get to God, how we see God's word, whether we obey God's word, it's totally up to us. And because it's totally up to us, that also can affect how fast we mature as individuals in this Christian walk. For me, a lot of that was hindered because uh, the way I was raised, I was raised by good parents. Uh, my mother accepted Jesus in her heart when I think was, she was 10. No, I was 10. I was 10. And then me and my brothers, because we were going to church with her. Unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't, where we were, they didn't totally tell us the truth. They made us believe, well, I believe that the Christian experience you had to, something had to happen real special. You had to roll on the floor, or like Andre Cross said no songs, jump, jump over pews, or something exciting was supposed to happen. But really, it's just all about you asking God into your heart, believing that he's real, that he died on the cross, and you receiving the salvation that God has made freely available to you. And it was a long time before I realized that. But I was still in that mode where I just don't want to go to hell. <laughs> and that's, that's the sad thing about it, and I want to share that with people. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. God is a good guy. Yes. He loves us very, very much. Yes. Unfortunately, sometimes, and a lot of times, because we're in this natural body, we have plans for our own lives. Yes. And he has another plan yes. for our lives. Yes. And a lot of times they conflict with one another. Yes. And because they conflict with one another, and because we're human, a lot of times we will, we should, what we do, we tend to stick to our own plans instead of his plans, even though you hear him speaking, but because uh, we're saying we should supposed to know his voice. Sometimes we know his voice, sometimes we don't know his voice. Sometimes we block it out because we want to do what we want to do. Simple as that. But in the process, when we're doing what we want to do, we're concentrating on our specific goals, careers, marriage, or whatever it may be. We're kicking it to the curb, and we're missing out yes. on his best plan yes. for us. Yes. And there's so many, so many yes. natural, spiritual, financial, whatever he had planned for you. Because you got your own plan, and your plan is sticking it right. in the way, keeping it from doing what he yes. wants to do. Right. <laughs> you miss so, so much of God's goodness. So much of what the relationship can really be. Now, I've heard from a kid, hey, you're supposed to have a personal relationship with God. But the thing that I'm talking about as a teenager, and it's probably maybe for some adults, it's hard sometimes to see God that he really is a person. That you can have a relationship just like I can have with anyone out here. But since you don't think of him as a person, you can't see him physically like your mom and dad if you do wrong, pulling your pants down and giving you a spanking, which he does. But you can't, it, it, it's, it's different than what would happen to us in our physical relationship. But God is that kind of God. If you don't stick with his plan and do what he wants you to do, he's still there and he'll still be by your side. But you're missing it. When you really walk in his plan, he's not by your side. He's all in you. That's right. He's speaking yeah. through you. Yeah. He's walking with you. Yeah. Everything that you do, 
He's there yeah. with you, helping you accomplish his goals yeah. and his purpose and his plan. Yeah. But like I say, a lot of times we just stand in the way. Because we want to do what we want to do. Oh, I got three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Now, in the last three minutes, I just want to share a few things that we can do that can help to change that. Yeah. Now, the apostle shared many, many years ago. It kind of tickled me when he shared that message. How we're born again. So when we're born again, we're brand new babies. So you know how babies do. They got, they got to learn to grow from babies to taking care of themselves. So why they're in that emphasis stage. Yeah. It, it, and it's sad. If we don't choose to, to follow God's plan, we can stay emphasis forever. Right. <laughs> and, and it shouldn't be that way, but you can. Right. Uh, but there's ways to make that move faster. And that is really just to take the time to do the things that we're taught in church. Spend time in God and pray. Not, not, not just as a habit. See him as a person. See him somebody like somebody you're really, really talking to. That's right. yeah. yeah. And let him talk back to you. That's right. Spend time in worship. That's yeah. right. That's, God said he, he, his presence is in worship. Yeah. So when we worship, we, even if we don't, can't sing or whatever, we put the music on and just get all into his presence. Right. You don't have to be here. Right. You can be in your car. You can be at home. Or anywhere you can play the music. And it'll help you to grow. And in conclusion, what I want to say, just get to know the Savior, the Master, our God. It's a good thing. He loves you. And your life will be better. God bless you. But I asked God to give me what he wanted and what he want, wanted to talk about. Yeah. Pastors talked about prophecy, but God told me about the prophet. <laughs> he said what a prophet should be. He said a prophet should have insight. They should have wisdom. They should have seeing eyes to see what's going on with the people. How to draw the people in to God's kingdom. He was telling them about how you speak to people. How you usher people. How you bring people. And, his, and, and I thought I said Lord. This, speaking in my mouth. I said Lord. This is not what other people talking about. He said, but this is his word. I'm going to give you what he gave me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He says a lot of people in church that don't hear. Mm. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that don't discern. Mm. There's a lot of people have no insight into what he's saying mm. and what he wants done. Yes. We say we love God, but we don't hear. Mm. We say we we're sleeping. We got he keep me saying this all every time I talk to him, he tells me about the sleeping saints. Mm. Who don't hear, mm. who don't see, who you don't know, and don't want to know. Mm. All they want to be doing is seeing in church so that the person says, oh she go to church all the time. Mm. But it's not about going to church all the time. It's having a relationship with Jesus Christ and right. knowing him as Lord and Savior. That's he right. wants intimacy. Right. He wants relationship. Yeah. That's right. yeah. He wants time to sit with you yeah. and talk with you. He wants you to praise him and yeah. worship and honor him. He wants you to give him your all in all, mm. which I told him, and I've been telling him, oh, God, I, I surrender my all in all to you. I give you all that you want and you need. You show yeah. me yeah. how to be what yeah. you want me to be. Because yeah. I don't know what I want to be. Yeah. In my fleshly self, like, you know, you say, well, I can do this now. You can't do nothing now. Take it back off, brother or brother Scott. You can't do nothing in yourself. Right. You don't know nothing. Right. You, th you think you know something. You know nothing. That's right. When you're dealing with God and his wisdom and his understanding, his revelation of the world and the people in the world, it's a whole lot deeper than what you think. God is going in layers and layers and layers, teaching you how to be the men and women of God he would have you to be. Amen. Amen. I'm coming from Isaiah chapter 64. Four. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, none perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O God, beside thee, which he had prepared for him that waited on him. I want to talk about my subject. I'm going to pick 
wait on the Lord. Okay. Um, God has to prepare our hearts for ministry, job position, direction. Even you want a husband. Even you want a car. Even if you want a home. But we, we just like microwave. <laughs> Everything come to us. God don't work that way, y'all. He don't work that way. But we want it. When we want it, how we want it, we don't need care. Long as we get it. But God don't work that way either. And it prepare, God prepares our heart for things. So in that prepare, you got to pray. You got to keep your focus on God. You got to fast. You got to come before Him. You got to worship Him. You got to adore Him. Hallelujah. And even He got to heal your heart of childhood hurts, bitterness. He had to heal a broken relationship. And after you know, I was just thinking, you know, it's, it's just sometimes that we want to rush God. But you know, God know the time. He know the season. We just got to wait for God. Because when you wait on God, God will exhort you in due time. So don't rush God. Let God make you. Sometimes you got to put you on that power wheel and just roll Roll you and roll you and roll you. Just let God do what He wants to do. Don't rush Him. Because one thing about if you hurt, hurt, hurt people. So you let God get all that junk out of you. You know, have you a fish? You're not going to eat a fish till you gut them and clean them up. Get the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to tell these people and, and, and they ain't doing something you want to tell them. You know, I love the Lord. But they gonna look at you and say, what? You love the Lord and you doing what I'm doing? How can you bring me to Jesus? How can you bring me to Jesus? You can't bring me. You got to get yourself right first. And then you come back and talk to me. It's patient. People right. don't have That's patience. Right. That's right. They don't have faith. Mm. They don't trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. And don't talk about humility. Mm. Oh my God. Right. Right. <laughs> and humble themselves. Oh. Sometimes you got to humble yourself. Amen. You got to be able to taste That's stuff. Right. Yeah. Let that stuff roll off your back. Yeah. Because one thing about it is God will put you in some situation. Hallelujah. I tell you, if there was a hole there, you would go right there in that hole. You would get in that hole, but you know what? God is just so good. You know, I, I go to Walmart and I tell you, Walmart will teach you patience. God knows it will teach you. It will teach you, teach you patience. I go to Walmart sometimes, and this one lady was ahead of me. She had a whole cart full of stuff. Now you know that lady when she came into Walmart. She, when she looked around and saw all those people in there. She shouldn't even put that grocery in there. She got up and left. 
I look at her and say, Lord, have mercy. God, thank you for giving me patience. Thank you for giving me patience. Thank you for giving me patience. A lot of people don't have patience. They want everything right then and then. Even your own children. They come and tell you. Mama, mama, I want this and that. But you know what? When you tell them something, do they move? No, they don't. No, they don't. But they want you to move for them.
Father, we thank you. You're all knowing and all powerful. God, you're the keeper of our soul. Life comes from you, God. From you, God. You put breath in this body, God. So we thank you, God. We give you glory, God. And no flesh shall glory in your presence. We thank you now. Now I come into full agreement with the Holy Ghost. It's not about me, Lord, but it's about the Holy Ghost and what he wants to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied, y'all. I'm full. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm just going to make three points. Hallelujah. The first point, I want to description. Second Chronicles 7.14. God says, he's talking to Solomon. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble me and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. If I haven't learned anything else, you got to pray. You got to pray. It's not an option. You got to pray. Hallelujah. You got to pray. I remember two situations that come to mind. I had to make a decision with my wife. My mother-in-law was against me. My father-in-law was against me. Hallelujah. I had to come up against the psychiatrist. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I just, I just can't do it. Yeah, come on now. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I can't deal with this. Yeah. But one thing I learned early on, on. how to pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How to intercede. Yeah. Hallelujah. How to stand in the gap. Yeah. I learned that early on. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I began to pray. And God said to me, who is this uncircumcised giant that he should defy the God, the living God? Who is this Goliath? You can stand up against him. Hallelujah. That's why you got to pray. You got to hear from God. Like it's already been said, we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Daniel turned towards Jerusalem three times a day. Daniel prayed. Hallelujah. There are giants in the land, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory. So you got to pray. You got to hear from God. You got to be able to intercede. You got to be able to petition. Hallelujah. You got to get in your quiet place. You got to get in your closet. Hallelujah. Glory. Point one. Point two. Turn with me to 2 Kings 19.18. 2 Kings 19.18. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 19.18. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about a remnant, y'all. Right. Hallelujah. Elijah just had a victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. So all the prophets of Baal. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Jezebel had sent word, I'm coming after you. Yeah. Now he just had victory, but he went into a slump. Yeah. And he started crying out to God. Said, they, they kill all the prophets. I alone, when I'm the only one of God. God said, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's how it look like sometimes, right? We don't only want gossip, but I got a rim. Hallelujah. I got about 7,000 that hadn't bowed the knee to Baal. Hallelujah. Glory to God is always got a rim. I look from Genesis to Revelation. He's always got a rim. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. God has got a remnant. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you a part of the remnant? Mm -hmm. You can be. Yeah. You can be a part of the remnant. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God will preserve it. He did it with Noah, right? Noah yeah. was a remnant, right? He destroyed the earth. Hallelujah. But he found a man that, that loved him, that was after his heart. Hallelujah. That would obey him. Hallelujah. So the world was repopulated because of Noah. God has got a remnant. Hallelujah. And you know what? <laughs> you don't have to participate. <laughs> It's going to get done. Whether you participate or not. Hallelujah. It's going to get done. Hallelujah. That's when the remnant comes in, y'all. Hallelujah. It's going to get done. And my last point. Turn over to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now y'all know the story. The serpent done beguiled, eel, Eve. They ate of the apple and all of that. And now they're trying to hide from God, right? So verse 11 said, this is God talking to Adam. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereby I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now I just want to focus on that one verse, but I want to focus on naked, right? Mm -hmm. So God says to me, who told you that you were naked? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, he was saying, like he was saying, who told you you couldn't do it, man? Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's only four people in the garden at this time. Right. God, Adam, Eve, and the serpent. Right. Hallelujah. We know God didn't tell him he was naked. Right. We know Adam didn't tell himself. Right. Hallelujah. We know Eve didn't tell him, but he told Eve, so there's only one person left that's lying to us. That's right. He told you you ain't good enough. He said you ain't pretty enough. He said you ain't intelligent enough. He's a liar. Hallelujah. See, God got something for me. I don't know what you think of. Glory to God. And I'm willing to pick it up. I'm anxious, y'all. And I'm ready to run. Hallelujah. I'm not fighting God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm lining up with him in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to fight him. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to fight you. Hallelujah. But I'm going to line up with God. See, I'm going to get with this. Hallelujah. See, see, see one, one man say, a lot of people on Facebook, hallelujah, but none of them want to put their faith in the <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Because see, on Facebook, there's a lot of junk. That's why I'm saying this. Hallelujah. People proclaiming to be this and be that and want to preach and want to teach. Hallelujah. But they don't want to get their faith in the book. In the book. Where there's no jump. Hallelujah. Where this word will clean you out. When you're standing in front of the mirror and you say, not my brother and not my sister. You say, oh, Lord. Yeah. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want me to say, 
but I'm obeying what I hear of you speaking, and I always ask God for confirmation. Yes. What I'm coming to you is not a scripture that you have not heard before. This is a very familiar one. And the subject that I'm going to speak from, it is all about love. God said it's yeah. all, all about love. love. And from John 3.16, <clears throat> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, as I was writing this out last night, and I had written it out in outline and got ready to print, and my printer had no ink. So I said, but you know what? Thank God for technology, because I was able to take a picture of it. Oh, nice. Screenshot it. I do know that young people. And I put it on my phone. Amen. So I looked at it, and what the Lord had me to look at was to so, so loved. I always said so loved. To such a great extent, He demonstrated His love for us. He said, Whosoever, who is that? It's a formal term for whoever. Yeah. Whoever is the person or people oh. who or any person. She who, he who, whatever person who, no matter who, God sent Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now during the healing crusade last week, I gave my testimony to have heard about when I had the attack. But I did never had a heart attack. It was a spiritual attack. And I was sharing with Pastor Wanda how God, in his infinite love for me, gave me a warning and a dream. And he, you know, God reminds, Holy Spirit reminds you of things in piecemeal. Because as I was sharing it with her, I thought about the dream. And here I was in a place that was desolate. It was dark. It was dreary in the dream. You all know how an area or city that we've seen in movies has been attacked or affected by radioactivity mm -hmm. and everything is dead. Mm -hmm. There's just no light. Mm -hmm. And I was in that place. God showed me me running. And I was running, but it was somebody beside me, y'all. Mm -hmm. And I was running and running and running. And I heard this voice say, come, keep running, Rose, keep running. And I kept running and running. This barren land, dead. It's a dead place, y'all. And it was God, we were running, and this voice kept telling me, I felt the presence of somebody beside me. I can't tell you what they looked like. I can't tell you anything else other than I kept hearing and seeing a presence. I felt this presence. And then we got to this, it was an elevator shaft in the middle of nowhere. That's where we had to run to to get to that elevator shaft. I was running, said, come on, we're almost there. I got to it, it was a gate in this elevator shaft. And as I went to go under, the gate hit me on my chest. And I cried out and I said, hey, so it hit me. But he said, but you made it. Went in this elevator shaft. And just, that was it. God was showing me then. I'm with you always. Amen. When that temptation, he said, there's no temptation such as common to man. Yes. But I'm a faithful God. It'll shock. Yes. I'm going to give you a way of escape yes. that you may be able to bear it with that temptation. Yes. That temptation yes. is something that comes to take you out. Yes. The enemy had a plan for me. Yes. He wanted to kill me. Yes. But God said, yea, though I walk yes. through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. I will fear Because God is with us. Amen. He said, hallelujah, Jesus. When the enemy comes upon me like a flood, God said he would raise a standard against him. Amen? I don't know who needs to hear this, but God told me to tell this testimony. A 
about being in a barren place when you look like there is no life. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Yeah. Call on me and I will answer you. Hallelujah. Show you great and mighty things that you know that of. Emotion. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't left my notes. But God said it's all about love. God said, when I commended my love for you, I sent my son while you were yet a yeah, sinner. Yeah. I sent my son to die a gruesome death yeah. on the cross for you, for me, for everyone who calls yeah. upon the name of the Lord. They shall be yeah. saved. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Hallelujah. He gave a way of escape. Even if you're in a, a a dead situation, yeah. a dead relationship, yeah. a dead in job, yeah. a dead in community, whatever it is that does not have the life of God in it. God said, I've given you a way of escape. Yeah. But God said, I want to remind the people Amen. that First John says, Hallelujah, Jesus, the fourth chapter, First John 4. Yeah. 18 says there is no fear in love. Amen. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. But see, he who fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. But if a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. God said, You're a liar. Heart of yeah, yeah, yeah. For he who loves not his brother yeah. whom he has seen, yeah. how can he love God whom he has not seen? Yeah. You see your brother whom you have seen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. But how can you love God whom you have not seen? Yeah. He said, This commandment, commandment have we from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. Yeah. God we love him, he says, we must keep his commandments. Yeah. We must love one another yeah. as God has loved us. Yeah. You gotta love yourself first. Yeah. There are people who are still not speaking in the household of faith from things that happened years ago. God said it's time to get it right. God said it's time to love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. Don't lean to your own understanding. Multitude of sins. Yeah. We gotta love yeah. one another yeah. because right. He first loved us. Lord, it's all yeah. about love. Yeah. God bless you.
we had a good diet today. Yes. Hallelujah, the word yes. of God. Praise God. I, as I was listening, we want to know who's driving our car. All right, now. That's right. We can't drive the car ourselves. We can't be a passenger and trying to drive the car. And I can relate to that. Because <laughs> I will pick people up and take a place and they're going to tell me how to get the all the cuts. And I've been living in the city all my life. But we want God to drive our car. Amen? And how do we allow God to drive our car? First, we must be born again. Right. Hallelujah. We have to be born of the water yes. and of the spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Flesh and blood can even inherit eternal life. Hallelujah. We must be born again. Hallelujah. Growing and maturing in the word of God. Learning how to pray. Getting, taking time to know God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Making sure that we have divine insight. Yes. That we are hearing and discerning yes. and are not sleeping. Putting your time in with the Lord and giving Jesus your all in all. And then as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of him, we have to learn how to wait on God. Hallelujah. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and never faint. if you want more wisdom, if you want more grace, yes. you have to learn to wait yes. in the presence of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The word says, he who keeps his mind stayed on him, he shall keep him yes. in perfect peace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. And then, as God's people, that are called by his name if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then we can hear from heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And there, as we are praying and, and seeking the face of God, as we humble ourselves, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we call on the Lord. We allow God to equip us so that we can face the giants in our lives. Hallelujah. And you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep the messages together. Praise the Lord. As we pray, you know, we don't have to believe the lies that come through our flesh, come from the devil, and they come through others. Hallelujah, because we're being in his presence, praying, we are learning the voice of God. Hallelujah. And, and because there are giants in the land, we don't have to fear. Because God always has a remnant. When we're going through things, when we're facing things, we don't have to feel like I'm the only one going through this. Hallelujah. Because God always has a ram in the bush. Hallelujah. He always has a remnant. Hallelujah. He will not be without a witness in the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
So we must remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life through him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God so loved that there, there it's more than just loving. Hallelujah. I sacrificed. I gave up my best. That you might have life. And have it in the abundance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is the bread of life. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Our necessary food. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we eat and eat and eat and we never get full, but when you eat of the bread of life, oh, yes. He satisfies the Lord and so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. So whatever you go through, Know that you're going to need three principles operating in your life. And the overall message is it was redundant, the thing. Pray, read a word, and worship. Hallelujah. If you want to stay focused, stay in tune, pray, read the word, meditate on Digest it and then praise and worship God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you know, if we leave here today, we are without excuse because we've heard the counsel of God. Hallelujah. The mind of God for His people and for ourselves. God is good and His mercy endures forever. And his truth, yes. not just for this generation, but through all generations. Yes. The same principles yes. and the same truth yes. is going to stand. Yes. Hallelujah until Jesus come back. Yes. And when he come back, will he come back for people prepared and ready for him. Yes. God bless you. So it's the same way.